it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. I will bless the Lord at all times. Who oh, magnified the Lord with me? This is the day which the Lord has made. Call it for purity together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts open, all desires known, and for whom no secret are hidden. Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and only magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord our God is one Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your hearts and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment and the second is like, namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So love the world, I gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people, meekly kneeling upon our knees. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors in thoughts and word and deed. Through negligence, 
through weakness, through our own deliberate faults, we have not sufficiently walked according to the mind of Christ. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Amen. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Amen. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. Amen. And keep you in life eternal. Amen. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for the day the epistle and the gospel. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father of mankind, who gave your holy begotten Son to take upon himself the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross, give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that sharing his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory, who is alive and raised with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The portion appointed for the epistle, Acts chapter 2, we commence the reading from the 41st verse. Then, they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need, and they continually daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking breads from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the people had it to the church daily, such as should be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Please, let's thank for the gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 25th chapter of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, as recorded by St. Matthew. Commence the reading from verse 44. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he shall sell the sheep on his right hand, or the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger and felt thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger 
and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, in as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it to me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye caused into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was an ungod, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall he also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hunger, or a thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee, then shall he answer, shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, he did it not to me. And this shall go away into everlasting punishment for the righteous into life eternal. This is the gospel of Christ. As we look to you in your word this morning, speak to us in the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless our lives with the truth of your word. Even as we go on in the month of August, may your word be a lantern unto our paths. And may it guide us through the paths of this world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please be seated. The question I like to put to us this morning is what kind of church should we be? What kind of Christians should we be? What kind of church should we be? Brethren, we live in a changing world with its effects and consequences upon our life and being. The world is changing every day. In fact, the academia will say we live in a VUCA world, a world that is characterized by volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. A world that presents diverse changes in all ramifications. In fact, look where you are. There is hardly a place 
with stable peace. There are tensions everywhere. Even in our country, Nigeria, there are tensions here and there. And the question to us, how does the church navigate this complex context and remain faithful to the cause of our Lord Jesus Christ? What kind of church should we be? But then our epistle this morning, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, gives us the attitude of the early church that was born after Pentecost, even as they experienced the challenges we are also experiencing today. And I'd like us to look at those verses, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. What should be the attitude of the church? If we are to be a biblical church at this time, the number one thing we need to do is to look at our foundation. Psalm 11 verse 3, the Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 confirmed to us that the only foundation that could be laid is the foundation in Christ. So, brethren, in this book of world, world of uncertainty, world of crisis, number one, as a church, as individuals, we need to look at our foundation. Are you a child of God? Because if your foundation is not in Christ, you may not be able to navigate this changing world. I like the way the hymn writer puts it. He said, In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my strong. This cornerstone, this solid ground, found through the fairest drought, and storms. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In a world where there are many so-called gods, in a world of terrorism, in a world of crisis, protest, our foundation in Christ must be firm and solid. Number two, we must be devoted. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, verse 42. The Bible says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. We need to be devoted to the word of God, the apostles' teaching. The contemporary world struggles with the apostles' teaching. But for us to navigate as Christians in this VUCA world, we must be devoted to the word of God. It is not just hearing, but doing the same. We must be devoted to the fellowship of brother Christians. Our togetherness at this time is very important. The koinonia of the church must be strong. We must be devoted to the communion, to our oneness in the Lord Jesus Christ. And lastly, we must be devoted to prayers. Our world needs prayer. Christians must be devoted to prayers. The prayer life of the church today 
is nothing to write home about. Many business meetings, but few prayer meetings. Now we dwell in shallow prayers. Now we dwell in prosperity prayers. There are no intercessions again. The church in this generation must be devoted to intercessory prayers. A songwriter said, prayer is the key. Prayer is the master's key. Jesus started with prayers and end up with prayer. People of God, people of old, depended so much on prayers. If you look at the Acts of the Apostles, in times of crisis, they will gather in the room and pray. And the Bible told us they prayed so much that the foundations of where they were gathered were shaking. We pray selfish prayers today. Let my enemy fall down and die. Then you'll be living in the world alone. We pray selfish prayers instead of intercessory prayers. Number two, for the church to stand in this generation. Number three, we must be in the hall of God. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 43. The Bible says, everyone was filled with awe. Everyone was filled with the fear of the Lord. Even those of us who are Christians today, we must live our lives in the fear, in the hall of the Lord. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 43. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of wisdom. Where is the hall and fear of God today? The internet decoder, ICT, sports, courtesy, socials, they have taken the place of the fear of God. In fact, we fear men more than we fear God today. Where are the signs and wonders? When was the last time you trusted God for the impossible? I pray the Lord will help our generation. Amen. Number four, we must be united. For us to face this changing world, Christians all over the world must be united. If you read verses 44 to 46, Acts chapter 2, the Bible says all the believers were together and they had everything in common. Oneness of the believers in our generation is nothing to write home about. What about our sharing together? I like the way Matthew 25 puts it, the gospel for today. He said, I was sick, you took care of me. I was in prison, you fellowship with me. I was challenged, but our world today, we no longer care about the next neighbor to us. In fact, we barricade our, our homes. We don't even know our neighbors. We must be united. We must hold things in common. Selfishness must be removed from us. We must live as one family of God with all sincerity of ours. We must be united to navigate the changing world. And number five, we must be ready for the coming of the Lord. The early church Christians were always ready. We must be ready for God's blessings. And I pray for you, in the month of August, the Lord will bless you. Amen. Your life will never be the same. Amen. We need to look unto God. As we go into the month of August, we need to look unto God this month in prayers so that we can be blessed. Psalm 77 verse 12, it says we should look unto God so that we might be blessed. In the month of August, we need to look back and remember what God has done in the past with thanksgiving. Jude chapter 1 verse 17. We need to look forward 
Philippians 3, 14. Paul says, I forget the things of the past. And I look forward. As Christians in the month of August, we need to look forward to what the Lord will do. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and ever. We need to look again. Who is this our God? Look at your circumstances with the eyes of faith. Remind yourself that your God is a God of great wonders. Amen. He is able. As you go into this month, whatever the crisis, whatever the world is saying, know that you, I have a God who never fails. I pray will not fail you. Amen. Our problems are opportunities to discover God's greatness in our life. And I pray for someone here today, in the month of August, you will see the hand of the Lord in your life. Amen. And as you go in the journey of August, Genesis 26 verses 12 and 13 will be my prayer for you. This month you will sow in the land of the world and you will reap abundance. Your labor will not be in vain. This month the Lord will prosper you and make you prosperous. People around you shall testify that the Lord is with you and so shall it be for you the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Please kneel as we pray. We love in Christ. Let's appreciate God for the privilege He has given unto us to witness another Sunday and another month. It is by the grace of God to enter the month of August. From the summer, if you look back and see what the Lord has done for you, you will see a need to praise Him. Appreciate Him on behalf of your family. Bless Him concerning all He has done in your business. Appreciate God for what He has done concerning your children. Let's appreciate God on behalf of this country called Nigeria. It is by the mercy of the Lord we have not consumed. Lord, in your mercy. The Lord, I want you to ask for comfort and help from above as we journey in the month of August. From the gospel we have read, Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. For I was in hunger, he gave me meat. I was thirsty, he gave me drink. I was stranger, you took me in. Many of us, we are passing through a lot. Can you please pray, Lord, comfort me. Comfort my spirit, comfort my soul, comfort my family. In every aspect of my life, let your comfort locate me. Jesus had promised us, he will not leave us, that he will send a comforter to us. At this moment, we need a comfort from above. Ask God to put relief upon you, where it seems you can no longer cope, where it seems your strength can no longer carry you, where you are frustrated, where you are disappointed, and you ask for divine visitation. These people were helped in their time. Lord, arise and help me. Financially, help me. Materially, help me. Spiritually, help me. Mentally, help me. Psychologically, help me. Some of us, we are down emotionally. Lord, help me. And I commit to the month of August that the Lord will journey with you. In the month of August, you will not be frustrated. You will not be disappointed. The hands of the Lord will fight your battle. He will see you through in the name of Jesus. Commit all you have brought into the month of August to the hands of the Lord. He's the only one that can keep and preserve it. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. Lord, you will preserve me, you will preserve my wife, you will preserve my children. When I go out, you will preserve me. When I come in, you will preserve me. As I've started the month of August, my life will finish this month. And at the end of this month, I will rejoice. Thank you, gracious Father. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith, strengthen Henry, our primate, Ulushino, our Archbishop, Baba today, and our Bishop and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, bless and guide our rulers, especially we pray at this time for our President Bola, our governor in Ogu State, Dako. Give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that people may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give grace to us, our family and friends, especially at this trying time, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loved us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ, according to your promises. 
grant us with them a share in your internal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. At this moment, can you please present your request before the Lord? Lord, in your mercy, rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints. We commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing Lord. Merciful Father, May we all rise. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. May the blessings and peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Together, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours all things come from you and of your own do we give you the lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god is it right it is our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise holy father Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, to Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, for He is your living world. To Him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. To Him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving Him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised Him from the dead and exalted Him to your right hand and eye. To Him you have sent upon us your holy and life and giving spirit and made us our people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks for the first seven months of the year 2024. We appreciate your loving kindness, which is better than life. And we commit ourselves as we go in the month of August that you will lighten our paths, that your spirit will guide us, that you make us to prosper and become prosperous. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the air. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Please kneel as we continue in prayers. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine 
may be to us his body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, remember his suffering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And as we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup is one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest. These are sacrifice of thanks and praise. As we eat and drink this holy gift to the presence of our divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in heaven and on earth. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessings, and honor, and glory, and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is in the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup which we bless is in the communion of the blood of Christ. We are one body because we share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Together on our knees, the prayer of humble asses. We do not presume to come to this your table. Merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, you are not worthy so much to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
the mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The second prayer together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be our living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Can we commit ourselves to the Lord as we go this week that the spirit of the Lord will go with us. That whatever we lay our hands on in the month of August shall surely prosper. Pray about your business. Commit your journeys to the Lord, that the Lord will prosper you on every side. He did it for Isaac. In the place of famine, he was having abundance. Whatever the situation in Nigeria, the Lord will lift up your head. He will lift the head of your children. He will open doors for you. Opportunities shall be attending to you in the name of Jesus. This month you will come back rejoicing. You will be fruitful and you will prosper. The hand of the Lord will be upon you, even to remove every attack of the wicked. This month the enemy will not be able to afflict you and your family. You will live in peace and you will live in joy. The blood of Jesus will fight your battle and it shall be well with you. The peace of God with passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. This is a memory verse, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? By love, by love, by love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Name of Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful week.